together for the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Man, every night's been good. How many's been enjoying this revival? Amen. How many feel revived? That's what it's all about. Getting something to go on to the next step. Amen. This word has been real. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. Said I, somebody said, I looked at my hands and they looked new. I looked down at my feet and they did too. Hallelujah. It's just something about that Holy Ghost that brings a change. Oh, they put love in your heart. But I had so much love in my heart and still got it. Man, that Holy Ghost will make you love your enemy. Those that seek to do you wrong, it'll make you love them. Amen. Make you pray. I Man, I find myself sometimes feeling sorry for them and praying for them. That's what it's all about. One day I had something going on and, and it was just bothering me. It was in my heart. I had to get this out of my heart. When you start praying for that person and calling that person out to the Lord, the Lord will drop a love in your heart for that person. He'll give you a burden for him. Amen. Don't get mad and say, I'm going to bless him out. I'm going to get even. Pray for him. Pray for your enemy. Love them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. That's the way to do it. I know I for an eye. A two for a two. He said, but I say unto you. We got to do it the way the Bible says it. Amen. Glory to God. If you're on board this train, you might well stay on board. This train is bound for glory. So ain't nothing going to ride but the righteous and the holy. Glory, hold on to your seat. It's going to get greater. Man, I didn't know those trains go fast like that. I was, I was mad at the boy. I hold on the train. Got to hold to the train. And when they got out there with the rule, uh, Brother Jody picked up about six or seven miles an hour with me on that. Man, I was holding on. Glory to God. But I know how old's going to get on this train. Glory to God. You got to get your ticket. Glory to God. Hallelujah. One stipulation he got. You got to get your ticket. I say you got to buy your ticket to get aboard. Go, we're going somewhere. I said, God's raising up a people that's going to evangelize the whole world. Look around you. This is the army of the Lord. Amen. This is the best he got. Glory to God. Because he don't need us. Hallelujah. For our brains. He already got this thing figured out. But that man told me one time, said, Brian, I hired you from the neck down. I got this thing figured out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, I'm the brains and you're the muscle. That's all we are. We're the muscle. He got it all written down. If we go by the blueprint and the four that that's already written down, we'll be all right. I said, we'll be all right. The word of God works. How many have seen the word of God work before? Glory to God. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody in here has one time or another, two or three thousand times, you can't even count the miracles that God has done in our life. Miracle after miracle. Glory to God. Amen. We are miracle children of God. Amen. We've seen this and He's, go, he's not going to stop moving. God ain't never stopped moving. He never stopped speaking. People stop listening. God's still talking. I say still talking. Let the ears of the church listen to what the Spirit's saying. It's saying something. God's getting the people ready. All this word that we've been having around here is getting us ready. It's getting us prepared for the mark of the beast. The time we can't buy or sell is called in the seal of God to be put in our foreheads. There's going to be one or the other seal. You have the mark. One or the other. The mark of the beast or the mark of God. And this word been teaching us to pray. Call on God. Hallelujah. He said, wait a minute before you heard anything. Let me seal the servants of God. God's got some people that's going to make it in spite of, in spite of what, whatever we go through, we're going to make it. Amen. I said, we're going to, we, look at somebody said, we're going to make it. Amen. We're going to make it. Hallelujah. Come on, say it like you believe it. We're going to make it. Amen. I 
I said, we're going to make it anyway. Glory to God. I said, I'm going to serve God anyway. This is what's in my heart. It's in my heart to serve God. He ain't got to have a pissed on men. Security guards watching me. Glory to God. German shepherds all behind me. They did me the same with my son because I love him. He's been so good to me. He's done so much for me. When nothing else could help me, love lifted me. Come on, clap your hands real good. Say, so what kept him on the cross? Love kept him on the cross. Because he said, at this moment, I can call 70,000 angels, 12 legions of angels to get me off the cross. One could have did the job. Glory to God, the love. The love that he had for me and you. Glory to God. We couldn't do it without him. I'm glad to be saved. I said, I'm just glad to be saved. Sanctified. Glad to be on the Lord's side. Come on, stand to your feet and give the Lord some praise. If you're just glad to be sanctified on the winning side. Glad to be a part of such a great kingdom. This is the army of the Lord. But we're not just having church tonight. We're in the presence of God. We're meeting on the highest level. Right here in the presence of God. Lift those hands and tell them thank you. Well, let me be here, Lord. I'm just glad to be here. Oh, so many on the outside need to be here. We're going to pray them in. I said we're going to pray them in. We're the first fruits of his creature. Glory to God. God saved you. It'd be a, 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 a conduit that he could channel his power through to save somebody else. We're just working out sitting on the shelf. God's going to use us. I said God's going to use us. He's going to anoint us. He's going to give us what it takes to, to do this task that's at that, that hand. I believe it. I said I believe it. Hallelujah. Clap your hands. That Sister Lyle comes. She's going to sing for us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't have a hallelujah, I got one out low. Hallelujah. But you got to give it back. I love to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I said hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I appreciate the Lord. I thank God for being here. Every year I take my vacation just to be in the house of God. To hear this word. Look, this word is going to help you and grow you to be more like Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank God for the word of God that's been preached every night. Telling us what we have to do to be saved to make it. Hallelujah. I thank God tonight. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. I say I love the Lord. I thank the Lord for being saved. Sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Don't have a mind to look back. Hallelujah. I love Jesus. Thank the Lord. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for my
praise God. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you.
of here. I got a request. I want everybody, if you would, invite somebody to come out to the meeting. Or tell a neighbor, cousin, a friend. Amen. Somebody that come out and fill up some of these seats. Amen. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost is here. I said, Jesus is going to meet you here. Amen. He'll meet you at the end of your faith. Amen. He's a miracle worker. Yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. We do thank God for everybody that's here. We're going to change the order of the service for a moment and take up the offering. I want you to give us unto the Lord to help curtail some of the expenses of this meeting. It's been real costly to move this big tent of this magnitude around this area and everywhere else. It's, it costs us. It's not just going for you. But we thank God for everything that you do. Amen. We want you to stand to your feet as Sister Allie plays something real soft on this organ and get a chance to give this the good boy. Amen. The best one. So blessed is the ones that give. He said he'll give it back. And how many times have you seen God give it back over and over? All the time it ain't money. Just your child to be kept from the molester. That's worth it all. Just you to be kept. And to be saved, it's worth it all. Money can't buy some things. So I'm talking about like peace. To lay down and, and have rest without taking a whole bunch of stuff to sleep. Amen. It means something. I said it means something. Not to walk the floor all night and the only relief you get is morning. The reason I can say that I've been there, I've done that. But God delivered me, set me free, gave me peace, changed my life. And I'm so glad to be on the Lord's side. It makes me mighty happy. Amen. Glory to God. If you would, stand to your feet and bring your offering. And Sister Abby play something.
you could do better than that, somebody shout praise the Lord. How many glad to be in the house of God tonight, amen? Come on, let's make some noise for Jesus, amen? Hallelujah!
Time to get right with God. Praise God. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Now I am happy all the day. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden.
is because he was spotless, sinless. See, he couldn't have offered up himself to pay for our sins if he'd have had sin. The Bible said, who, who knew no sin and no God ever was found in his mouth. That's why the blood of Jesus was accepted for the sacrifice to pay the debt that you and I owe. That you and I could never have paid that debt in a hundred lifetimes. I said in a hundred lifetimes. Without Jesus, praise God, we could never be saved. Without the shed blood of the Lamb, our sins would still remain. But ain't you glad that your sins don't still remain? Jesus took them away. When they used to offer up the blood of lambs, you know that blood on an old covenant only covered sin. It never took sin away. Paul said the blood of bulls and goats never did take away sin. But it covered sin. And it appeased God to keep God's judgment off of sinners. Until, until Jesus came. And when Jesus came, He didn't cover sin. He took sin away. Behold the Lamb of God, He said, which taketh away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. So Jesus didn't cover it. If Jesus only covered sin, we'd still be looking for somebody to take it away. But we don't have to look for nobody else. He's already come. He's already died. He's already rose. Paul, over there in the book of 11 chapter, he said, John said, to Jesus said, Art thou the Christ? Or do we look for another? See, John was fixed to be martyred. John was fixed to have to give his life for preaching. For, for preaching the truth and wouldn't take it back. He told Herod it wasn't right to have his brother's wife. And old Herodias, which was his wife, waited on the chance to get him. And as you preach the truth, you stand up for the truth, you got folks waiting on their chance to get you. You don't stir up too many devils, you don't preach no truth, you don't cry loud against sin, ain't nobody going to bother you. But I want you to know they're going to be seeking opportunity to get you in some kind of way. Wait on the opportunity to take a shot at you. He said, art thou the Christ? Or do we look for another? Praise God. And you know if Jesus is Jesus to you tonight, put you all in it. Put you all in it. Search for him, seek him with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your body. You know, the Bible said all the commandments hang on these. Love the Lord thy God with all your soul, mind, body, and strength. And you know what? There ain't nothing left after that. That's all of you. Your soul, your mind, your body, and your strength. He got you. He got you. How many wants him to got you? How many wants him to have you? Hallelujah! How many wants him to give him y'all? Hallelujah! Your soul. He said, "All the commandments hang on these: love the Lord thy God with all your soul, with all your mind, all your body." All your heart and your neighbor. 
He didn't leave one of them out. He said, and your neighbor has you, yourself. He said, all the commandments. In other words, if you keep these two, you fulfill the commandments of God. And you can stand before God pure. Without spot and without limbs. Why don't you say that? Because he said all the commandments hang on thee. You do these. You keep these two. Love the Lord thy God with all your soul, heart, mind, body, and strength. And your neighbors, yourself, they ain't nothing left. Folks. You covered all the commandments. You ain't going to kill him. You ain't going to lie on him. You ain't going after his wife. You ain't going to do nothing. Yes. Praise God. All of that's covered under these two commandments. If you think about it. The whole commandments of God is covered under these two. Yes. See, when you love God with all your soul, heart, mind, body, and strength, and your neighbors yourself, that covers all the commandments. He knew what he was saying. Love your neighbors, you say. When you love that person like you do you, you ain't going to do him no wrong. You're going to look out for him. You see some danger coming to self, you're going to try to escape it. You know somebody waiting around that corner with a troop of four. You ain't going around there. If you love your neighbors, you you're going to tell him. Yeah. Have that man waiting around that corner with a two before on you. And he said, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the commandments hang on thee. You cover it. You cover the commandments of God. He said, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. He also said love covers a multitude of sin. It's like the old song was saying, when nothing else would help, love lifted me. When nothing else would help, love lifted me. Talk about the love of God. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that He gave His own. Yeah, you got to love something to give your only begotten Son to Him. When you know they're going to kill Him. When you know they're going to mistreat Him. In every kind of way. He was born of a virgin. Grew up. Entered into the ministry about 30 years of age. Was hated. You go on the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah and you'll find what he went through. He said, there who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. He'll grow up like a tender plant, like a root out of dry ground. He has no form or no comeliness. We beheld him, there was no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. We, he was stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. We esteemed him not. Yet he bore our sins and carried our sorrows. And with his stripes, we are healed. There ain't never been no single one man ever paid a price by love that loved the world so much until he was willing to lay his life down. He suffered rejection and death. And to die that all for death. His death was cruel. I said they made his death just as cruel as they could make it. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They beat him out to death before they put the cross on him. He was already bleeding. He bled down on the way to Calvary. History says 
They whooped him with that cat and iron tail that bones in the end of it and said it, his organs was hanging out. He was bleeding. There's blood just stringing from him. He bled down. He was beaten to death. The Bible said there was never no man ever marred like him. Nobody had ever been beat like Jesus. There have been a lot of men take a lot of whoopings. But Jesus took the worst whooping. He took the greatest whooping. Because that man was sick. He had to cover something. He had to cover our sickness. He had to pay for our sicknesses. That whooping had to be great. And the Bible said, no man was ever marred like him. He was beat to a pup. And I watched. That passion of Christ, I got so mad I had to quit. And I got angry. I got so mad until I got scared for myself. And I believe I'd have my shotgun on a shot through the street. I said, there ain't no use of this. There ain't no use of beating him for nothing like this. But heaven knows that was old me. That was my old flesh. That was no human being. Thank God, but there was something that went farther. Hallelujah! There was a reason. There was a reason. There was a reason. They beat him like they beat him. Like the song goes. They beat him all night long. There was a reason. That beating had to level up. That crucifixion had to come up to the accepting point of God to accept it. That death and that suffering for the salvation of the world. It had to be an awful death. It couldn't be no easy death. It couldn't be legal injection where you just go to sleep. But they beat him. He died with his eyes open. He washed his own blood flow out of his own body. He could feel and look down and see his organs hanging. He could feel the blood streaming down his legs. Down his back. He was marred and beat. Yeah, big Steve that's stricken, speaking of God and afflicted. The Bible said we exceeded him not. We didn't lift him up. We didn't lift him up. You know, people don't want to be around nobody in that shape. People don't want to be around nobody in that shape. They all left him that night. They fled. Jesus prayed. In the garden, that human being, he was a man. He was a human being. But he was a holy man. He was a son of God. He was a lamb of God. He was a sacrifice. He was the Messiah. He was sent to bear the sins of the world. He was sent to die that all for death. Cruel mocking. Slapped him. If anything, if a man's got anything in him, another man slapped him inside the head, it'll come out. But thank God there wasn't nothing in the Lamb of God. He was tested at every point. You better believe a slap inside the head will test you. Don't look at me like that. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. I said a slap out of your head will test you. Well, if there's any fight in you, it's going to come out. Well, ain't you glad there wasn't any, nothing inside of Jesus that would mar the sacrifice? There wasn't nothing inside of Jesus. No matter what he went through, there was nothing on the inside of him to cause that blood, that precious blood, to be turned down. Hallelujah at the throne of God and say, I can't receive it. I could, he couldn't take a slap. Oh, there was something in him. 
Aren't you glad he took the slap? Where would you be tonight? Do you know there wasn't nobody else and never have been anybody else whose blood could have redeemed us? Nobody. There wasn't nobody else. There wasn't nobody else that could do it. Nobody else's blood would be accepted to pay the penalty and the debt of our sins. Nobody. Nobody. But Jesus. Hallelujah. That lowly Nazarene. That Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I said that Lamb of God. The Bible said he was, he went to the, like a sheep, like a lamb, dumb a voice there. He opened not his mouth. That chair could take that lamb, take all his wool off. He'll just sit there. Oh, he stripped. That's what they did to Jesus. He just sat there and didn't open his mouth. Oh, he could have changed the whole matter. He could have turned it all around. Oh, he could have turned it all around. He didn't have to. He didn't have to die if he didn't want to. He didn't have to lay his life down. He laid his life down because he loved us. Hallelujah. He said, no man takes my life. I lay it down. He laid his life down. Nobody had the power to take his life. You know what? We treat him so. Oh, we come to his house. And we just sat there so many times and we don't even raise our hands. Our hearts is down there on the ground. It ain't up. Oh, we don't esteem him. When the world's turning him away, when the world is turning their back on him, when the world is walking away from him, when the world is walking by an old rugged cross, with Jesus hanging on that cross, with his life streaming out of his body. You know, the Bible said the life is in the blood. His life, when your blood leaves out of your body, you are dead. You got to have blood to stay alive. Well, he gave his blood. He shed his blood. Listen. Nobody, no other name, ain't another name. The Bible said, there's no other name under heaven. Nobody, nobody, not your name, not my name, not the Pope's name, Pope George, Pope. Peter, Pope, whoever he is, it ain't him. It's not him. He's a false prophet. He's an antichrist. But Jesus is the Savior. Hallelujah. You know, so many men throughout the ages have got positions and they want to take God's glory. They want to take Jesus' glory. Oh, but I read in the Bible where it said there's no other name under heaven. He didn't say the Pope. He said there's no other name under heaven given among men. Whereby we must be saved. Other than the name of Jesus. For God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that He is Lord. Oh, how many can lift your hands tonight and say, He's my Lord. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of His blessed name. Oh, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to call on His name wherever I'm at. I'm not ashamed to get on my knees and call on the name of Jesus. I'm not ashamed to bear witness of His great truth and to preach the good news 
means of just the gospel of Jesus Christ of a man that lived and died and laid his life down and suffered the most awful suffering that a man could ever suffer to pay for my sins, sins that I committed, my sins and your sins, not his sins, but it was your sins. We owe him all tonight. I said we owe it all to Jesus. He said that who has believed our report? Who has believed our report? The report about Jesus. Who's believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord? Oh, Jesus has been revealed to you. You're blessed tonight. You're blessed to know the Lamb. Oh, the Lamb to know you. Oh, I'm not ashamed to be acquainted with the name of Jesus. I'm not ashamed of His precious Word. I'm not ashamed to teach people to do everything in word and deed. Do it all in the name of Jesus. I'm not ashamed to baptize in water in the name of Jesus. I'm not ashamed to call out devils and cast them out in the name of Jesus. I'm not ashamed of that blessed name. Oh, the devil would like to make you back down the pole. He liked for you to be ashamed. Oh, it ain't no time to be ashamed. It's time to lift him up. There's a world out there. If somebody don't break through the evil elements and darkness of hell and get the gospel to this lost and dying world, they're going to hell and the blood's going to stream from somebody's hands. You know, we can all make excuse why we can't. When Jesus said we can, go to all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall you cast out them. You'll speak with new tongues and tread upon serpents. Drink in the deadly poison, it won't hurt you. You'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They went about everywhere preaching the word. You know, God's people settled down. Oh, they settled down. The world's got them now. They used to be on fire. The people of God used to be in the streets and the highways and the hedges and the jail houses and the old folks' homes and the prisons. They were busy for God. But the people of God has settled down now. They're doing what the world is doing. They're not coming out of the world. They're going into the world. They're compromising. The preachers are compromising the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're selling out the name of Jesus. They're selling out holiness and righteousness. Who has believed our report? That he's the only way. Show us the way. Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the way. He's still the way tonight, folks. Ain't no other way to heaven. No good works ain't going to get you to heaven. You work because you are saved. You work because Jesus washed in the blood. But your good works ain't going to save you. You gotta be washed in the blood. He said you're saved by grace. Grace is the blood of Jesus. Grace is the death on the cross. Grace is the love. God, grace, you're saved by grace. You're saved by Jesus. Through faith. Not a word.
Blessed in the mansion mode. It's a gift of God. Salvation is a gift. You, you ain't got enough money to buy it, no how. I don't either. Fact of it, there ain't enough of Ain't enough of money in the world to buy one song. We sang that old song in the Baptist church when I was coming up. Oh, Jesus paid it all. All to Him I owe. Sin has left the crimson stain. He was. Tis why that's no. Oh, Jesus paid it all. Oh, to Him I Oh, sin has left a crimson stain. He is why has no He so you can't get around it. He's so high. You can't get over it. He's so low. You can't get on it. You ought to come in at the door. He's so high. You can't get over it. He's so low. You can't get on it. He's so high. You can't get around it. So you settle in your heart. You gotta come in at the door. Yeah. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the door. Yeah. He said, to try to come in any other way. You're the same as a thief and a robber. You can't get into heaven but through Jesus. Jesus is the door. I ain't the one door to heaven. And that door's got a name. How many what that door's name is? I said, what's the door's name? Jesus! You gotta come through Jesus! No other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. For God has highly exalted him. Giving him a name that's above every name. That's the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. The Muslims are going to bow. The Buddhists are going to bow. The Pope's going to bow. Holy Christmas is going to bow. Every false prophet's going to bow. Every hypocrite's going to bow. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. You know, people used to just, when they come in church, they hit their knees. Every knee, people just, whoop, just hurry up the bow. They don't hurry up the bow no more. He's so wild. Can't get around him, he's so low. Can't get on him, he's so high. Can't get over him. So you got to come to the door. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus alone. He's our sacrifice. He's our redemption. He paid it all. Nobody else can get that glory. You know, man always, preachers, bishops, so-called prophets and apostles, they just wandering around all in front of people strutting around like a bandy rooster trying to get the glory that goes to Jesus. He said, no flesh. He said, not many wise men. Not many noble men are called. I said, I don't call many wise men or many noble men. That I've chosen the foolish thing. Some of us wouldn't be in the kingdom tonight 
if we didn't have that scripture. Not many wise men that cut a lot of us out. Not many noble men that cut another bunch of us out. But God has chosen the foolish thing. Boy, he included us all. He? he included us. The foolish things of this world. He said things that are not. Things that ain't nothing. To bring to know. Things that are. He chose things that are not. Can't spell the name in box cover letter. Couldn't pass a test. If the name was test. You know what? God has chosen a lot of them before us. And they turned the world upside down. And you better believe, brother, God's going to choose a bunch of more of them. Don't you ever think that God's choosing you because you got a diploma or you got a, a DDT? That don't mean that God's going to choose you. Because you went somewhere and got a diploma from man. The reason God chooses you, hallelujah, is because he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast him out. When you come humbly before God and you humble yourself and you repent, God chooses you there on your knees. Not many wise men, not many noble men are called. You know why? Because people come to see them and not Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You don't call many presidents to preach or folk come to see the president. Jesus ain't got time to fool with the flesh like that. There's a lost and dying world like that. So what do he do? He covers his tracks. And he calls foolish folks. Nobody don't want to be around until they get the Holy Ghost. And once they get the Holy Ghost, everybody wants to be around them. Everybody wants them to lay hands on them. When God puts a gift in them, I tell you what, God gives you something to help folks with. There'll be more people's head stuck in the head of you than you can ever get to. Not many wise men. Not many noble men are called. God has chosen the foolish thing of this world. Things that are not. That ain't nothing. Things that are not. It ain't nothing but God chose. <laughs> right down the road. She'll tent up somewhere. See, people are just being blessed. Somebody screaming, I can see, I can see. Another Lincoln said, my God, I can not only walk, I can run. Somebody screaming out, I can talk, I can hear. You think, oh, I wonder who that is that God is using so greatly. You put on brakes and you back up and you get out and you rush in. And behold, the one that you don't like. He's sitting on the platform with a microphone in his hand. He's casting out devil. He's healing the sick. Hallelujah. God's using him. I said God's using him. God don't put that in our hands. He don't put the truth in our hands. Because if we chose for God, we wind up choosing the one we want. Not many wise men, not many noble men are called. But God has chosen the foolish thing of this world to bring to naught things that are. Why, Lord, that no flesh may glory in my presence. Let me tell you something. God ain't going to allow 
flesh the glory in His presence. All the glory and the honor goes to one. Nobody else is worthy. Now in the book of Revelation, it spoke up there. John said, I saw a book with seven seals. Hallelujah. And said, nobody was worthy. I opened the seals of that book Amen. and neither look on it. Amen. They weren't just not worthy to open the seals. They weren't worthy to look at it. Nobody in heaven, not an angel. Nobody nowhere was worthy to open the seals of that book, neither to look on it. Nobody was worthy to look at that book. Let on open it up. Oh. And know that Jesus made it possible Amen. that we not only could look at this book, we could read this book. Amen. We could believe this book. Because it's the Bible, it's the Word of God. It's God speaking to us. Hallelujah, it's the Word of God. John 1 and 1 said, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Same as in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him there was nothing made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God. Whose name was John. He was not that light. But sent to bear witness of that light. Which was the true light that came into the world. And lighteth every man, born not of the will of man, will of flesh, but the will of God. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He was in the world, and the world was made by Him. And the world knew Him not. He came to His own, and His own received Him not, but as many as them that did receive Him, gave He them power to become the Son. Somebody shout glory. glory. Shout glory. glory. Thank you, Lord. Oh, don't you love it? Chapter 5 of the book of Revelation said, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written wherein and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? A strong angel, set in love. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look there on. That's why I tell you that the only blood that was accepted was the blood of the Lamb. Nobody was worthy to offer up their blood. Nobody was worthy to open, to offer their blood for the sins of the world. The strong angel proclaimed who is worthy, open the seals. Nobody was found worthy to open the seals of that book with seven seals, neither to look thereon. Oh, but they are one. Come walking up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I wept much. John said I was weeping because no man was found worthy to open the 
and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Oh, God. Thank you for the Bible, Lord. Come on, lift your hands. God, I thank you for giving you. Giving us your word. We can sit out at night. We can wake up early in the morning. We can get up at midnight, two o'clock, and read your word. Oh, God. Don't you think that it done took it away? They tried. They tried to take it away. Oh, they tried to take this book away. But it's too late. You know, the old Catholic Church had the only one that chained to it. You had to go in the temple and read it. Chained. You couldn't take it with you. Wycliff, the 1400s. He was one of the ones that helped get the Bible out for the people. Once the word of God got loose to the people, it's too late then. People started believing it, and God started working it. Hallelujah! I said people started believing it, and God started working that word among the people. They killed him. They mourned him. Because he, he's the one who helped send the Bible out. They buried him in another old. Pope came along, dug his bones up and burned them. He wasn't satisfied with just killing him for what he had done. He had done the worst thing to them that ever been done. He unloosed the Word of God. He turned the book, the Bible, a loose on the world. Hallelujah. He turned the Gospel loose on the world. He turned the name of Jesus loose on the world. He began to call on His God began to work. Another emperor, in other words, an emperor, he was emperor. One thing was the Pope. Another emperor was raised up in Rome. He wasn't satisfied with just killing the man that loosed the Bible on the people. He dug his bones up and burned them. Hallelujah. 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 You better believe right now the bunch we got in office. If they could take our Bibles, we wouldn't have them none by daylight. I said the bunch we got in Washington, D.C. right now. And thank God he is moving. The Supreme Court just made a great ruling. And you know what? People are marching in the street to kill babies. I'm thinking, God, what's wrong with folks? What's wrong with people marching to kill Innocent babies. 35 million babies has been murdered since Roe vs. Wade. And you still got folks, even church folks, are for killing innocent babies. You'll answer to God what you'll do. You'll stand in the judgment. And we have, to, we have to be careful who we vote for. You'll stand before God with murder on your hands. I said you better be careful who you vote for. You better find out what they stand for. Oh, you put your John Henry you have to face it again one day in the judgment. You put your John Henry down behind somebody and tell the world, I'm backing this man up. And he believes in killing babies. He believes in transgender. Cutting up little girls, making boys out of them. Cutting up little boys, making girls out of them. You better watch where you put your John Henry. This old church world done lost it. They got no holiness whatsoever. No fear of God. That's why Jeremiah said, Call out! Spare not! Don't spare that old flesh. Don't spare these old people that believes in killing babies. Tell them where they're going to go. Tell them where they're going to wind up if they don't repent. They march with their signs and scream and holler, put off the clothes in church. Oh, 
the news where some of them just stripped the clothes off in church. And this is my body. Yeah, if it's God's church, if it's God's Holy Ghost, you better watch what you do. Because you'll have to answer to God. Don't take out no fear no more. Because on the news where they pour the clothes off right in church. Protest. I'll tell you what, my Bible says, strive to enter in at the straight gate. The broad is the road that leads to destruction. Many be that go in there. For now is the way, and straight is the gate that leads to life. Few there be that shall find it. Let me tell you, hell's boiling tonight. Hell is a lake of fire. And you know what? We don't hear much about hell no more. I was born and raised in the Baptist church, and they preached hell so hot that it felt like I was going to fall through the floor and go to hell alive. But now we're living in a time even the holiness preachers don't mention hell anymore. It ain't popular. They preach what's popular. He didn't say preach what's popular. He said preach my word. The incident season. Out of season reprove, rebuke, and so on. With all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come. For the time will come. For the time will come that men will not endure sound doctrine. People don't want sound doctrine anymore. Most of them are still, still, still having the glory of God. They got smoke machines now in church. Still having the fire of the Holy Ghost. They got blanking lights, flashing lights, dark ceiling, satanic atmosphere. That's what the devil worshippers has got. Dark ceiling. Lights turned down low. A satanic atmosphere. I got a cousin up in Oklahoma. A while back he called me, told me, seemed to God had sent a, one of their leaders up to Oklahoma City to be one of the mega churches. And his pastor knew him from the past and he called him and he called my cousin, wanted to go out and eat with him. He said, they got over there. And this is what he said. He said, you know what? This is a different day now. And said, we got to get rid of these old blood songs. Said, people don't want to hear these old blood songs. Blood songs? We need to sing the blood songs more than we ever sang them before. We need to lift up Jesus and tell the world that the blood of Jesus is the only, hallelujah, that can wash away your sins and give you eternal life. Said we got to get rid of these old blood songs. Said people don't want to hear that no more. You know what? They don't sing them no more. People out here don't sing the old blood songs anymore. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Well, there's power, power. Power, wonder working power, wonder working power in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus still can work a wonder in your life, can change you. Old things will pass away, and behold, all things become new. You become a new creature in Christ Jesus. That we got to get rid of all these old blood songs that people don't want to hear them no more. Said they want to hear about prosperity. He was telling the truth. He was exactly telling the truth. Prosperity. All these old mega church preachers on TV, give them five minutes. 
And they don't tell you to sow a thousand dollar seed into my pocket. It's all about sowing the seed. It ain't about souls. It ain't about a lost and a dying world anymore. It's about prospering in this life. Well, the Bible said it like this. What would it profit a man if he came the whole world and lose his soul? What would a man give in exchange for his soul? And he said he sat there and he couldn't take it no more. And he said, well, what did the Bible say? Without the shedding of blood, see his mama was a preacher. So what 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 the Bible mean then? Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And you here said we gotta get rid of the blood. He said, Well, well, wait, well, 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 well. See, you can't do nothing with the word. The devil can't do nothing with the word. The word will stand up. Will cause men to lose their train of thought. When they stand up against the word. Then he called me back later on and said, You remember the man I told you? He said he built that big church. And said there was a young man in his church that got killed in a motorcycle wreck. And said, I went to the funeral. He said, I didn't believe my eyes, my ears. He said he had a filth of whiskey up on the pulpit and had whiskey all along on the altar. Said he's up there now. He's the life of the party. Had whiskey on the sacred desk. Whiskey all along the altar representing what that young man stood and died for. Preaching him into heaven trying to. The Bible said, as a tree fall, so shall it die. Yeah. Jesus said, if you die in your sins, where I am, you cannot come. Amen. But do you know, all the preachers preach everybody into heaven. They live like hell and die like the devil. But they still preach them into heaven. Pointing on a man wants to die. After that is the judgment. You gotta pray right here. You gotta call on God while you got breath in your body. You gotta come to Jesus while you're still alive. Can't wait. Can't wait. And it was too late. Pointing on the man wants to die. After that is the judgment. Can't you see why folks in such a bad of shape? Preachers doing and preaching. And standing for stuff like this all over the country. Yeah. All over the country. They don't know nothing about heaven and hell no more. They don't even have a message on hell. My sister told me. She went to her pastor. And said, preacher. He said, yes. She said, do you have a message on hell? He said, uh, 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 uh. Back yonder somewhere said, you better go dig it out. Because this bunch of folks here are going to hell. You better try to save them. And preached on hell so long he didn't even know if he knew anything about it anymore. But how knows it's still written in the Bible? It's still the Word of God. There's a heaven that's high, but there's a hell that's low. Let me tell you one thing. Jesus said many in that day shall say, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? We done many mighty works in your name. We cast out devils in your name. It sounds like preachers to me. He said, but I'm going to declare to them, depart from me. You know what he called them? You worker of iniquity. Jesus called them a work of iniquity. They said we cast out devils in your name. We did many mighty works in your name. Folks, you got to be real. You got to be real. You got to get it right while you're on the face of the earth. It's no time to play. It's no time to play with God. It's time.
time to come out of the world. Come out of sin. Turn your back on the world. Come back to Jesus. Return to me, he said, and I'll return to you. The great price has been paid. The debt has been paid. Your debt has been paid. But do you know, even though the debt of sin has been paid, until you come to Jesus and confess your sins, your sins still remain. Yeah. You hear me tonight? Don't let your sins follow you. Amen. You send them up yeah. before you. Yeah. Repent in time to send your sins up before you. Don't wait and let them follow you in the judgment. Amen. Repent. He said the day is a day of salvation. The day that you hear my voice, heart, not your heart, but come. Send your sins up. Don't let your sins follow you. Get rid of them. Jesus will wash them away. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Listen what he said. Who has believed our report and whom his arm of the Lord revealed? Let me finish reading this in the book of Revelation. And no man in heaven nor on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said to me, Weep not, John, don't weep. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. To open the book and to loose the seven seals. Hallelujah. He said, The line of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to loosen the seals of the book. Listen, I beheld in the midst of the throne. And of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. Heaven knows he was a lamb and a lion. I said he was a lamb and a lion. He was a lion in authority and power, but he was a lamb in humility. When it come to laying his life down, he was a lamb. But in his trial, he was a lion. Of the tribe of Judah. He also was the root and the offspring of David. He was David's root and he was David's son. He was the root and the offspring of David. Hallelujah. Glory. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was the root. Of David, and he also was a son of David. He was God in the beginning. He was born the Son of God. Can you say Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory. Said I and my Father are one. Tell when you see me, you see the Father. How sayest thou? Show us the Father. Mr. Lel stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which is the seven spirits of God sent forth to all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, saying, Every one of them having hearts and golden vials 
full of the odors which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about of the throne, and the beast, and the elders, and the numbers of them were ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, and wisdom and strength, and honor and glory and blessing. Every creature which is in heaven and in earth, under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, hurts. I say, and blessing, and honor, and glory, and power, be to him that sitteth upon the throne, and to the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen, and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Oh, lift your hands and praise. Tell him you love him tonight. Tell him you love him tonight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't you love him? Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. He is despised and rejected of me in a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, we esteemed him not. Surely he borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of peace was upon him. And with his tribes, we are healed. Send on you, feet with me. Stand on your feet with me. Hallelujah. Put my hands up to the wall. Tell Jesus you love him. Oh, come on and tell him. We owe him everything, children. All honor, glory, and power. All dominion is in his hands. Hallelujah. He that cometh to me, he said, I'll know why. Cast him out. Hallelujah. Wave them hands. It's time to come home, prodigal church. Time to come back to the Father's house. Everything that you need is in the Father's house. What happened to the prodigal son? He left the Father's house. What he needed was back at the Father's house. It's time to come home. It's time to return. He said, return to me. I'll return to you. It's time to come back. Let's get out of the altars and come down to these altars. I can't take it no better way than for us to humble ourselves. Brothers on my right, the sisters on my left. Come and let's get on our knees. Humble ourselves at the feet of Jesus. Let's call upon His name tonight. Let's ask Him for forgiveness. Oh, let's wake up and return to Him. He said, return to me and I'll return to you. Hallelujah. Come home. Come back to the Father's house. Oh, tell Him. You appreciate Him being wounded for your transgressions. Tell Him you thank Him for shedding His blood. For your sins, your iniquities. Oh, God. Oh, we humble ourselves in your presence, Lord. We humble ourselves before you. We need you tonight. Oh God. We need you tonight. Oh God of anything. We just want to say thank you. For the great price you paid. Oh Lord.
God we get so nonchalant in the house of God lose our praise and our worship Lord we got so much to praise you for and Lord something has happened to us restore us tonight God put joy David said restore to me the joy of thy salvation create in me a clean heart renew a right spirit in me Search our hearts tonight. Oh, Lamb of God. Lord, we're asking you tonight, Lord. Lord, to take your precious blood. God, that you shed on that cross, Lord, at Calvary. God, it washes, Lord, with it. Lord Jesus, help us, Lord, tonight to realize, God, that great sacrifice. Lord, we would have been without a remedy tonight. God, we'd have had no hope tonight. Oh, Lord, unless you came and paid the price that you paid. Oh, Lord, thank you, God, for that. When said, for God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. Oh, Lord, of God, that we didn't have to die and go to hell. Or we didn't have to be sick, God, and afflicted because of that great price that you paid on Calvary. Lord, sometimes, Lord, I thank God we just forgive. Oh, God, how great of a sacrifice that you made, Lord. Oh, Lord, what you went through in your body. God, that we can be saved and healed, Lord. God, that we can be delivered and set free. Lord, that we have a promise, Lord, that we'll serve you. God, that we'll make it into heaven, Lord. You told him, you said, I must go, but I won't leave you without a comforter. You said, I'd send a comforter to you. But you said, in my father's house, there's many mansions. And if, I, if it wasn't so, I wouldn't tell you about it. Oh, Lamb of God, tonight, Lord. There's many out there tonight, Lord, that don't know what you've done for them, Lord. Don't know how that you love them, Lord. God, don't know that you took stripes on your back, God. God, for their healing, Lord. Oh, Lamb of God, there's many tonight, Lord, laying out there in the medical center, God, or in flowers, Lord, that don't realize, Lord, they're in CCU and I see you, Lord, and they don't realize Lord, that there's a healer. And that there's a Savior. God, it's a shame, Lord. God, people don't know how to pray, Lord. They don't have anybody to come in that hospital room and tell them there's hope. That no matter what the doctors told them, there's hope, Lord. God, they don't have it, God. God, even in the churches, Lord. Oh, Lamb of God. My brother Eve was saying, Lord, they don't even preach about the blood, Lord. God, many churches don't even believe in divine healing. Many don't even believe laying hands on the sick. Many don't even believe in that name Jesus anymore, Lord. God, they go to a place, Lord, that there's no help there. There's no power there. There's no authority there, Lord, to break the yokes off. Oh, Lamb of God, at least tonight, God. Everybody here tonight knows how to pray, Lord. Everybody tonight knows, Lord, about your grace and your mercy and your love, Lord. God, there's many tonight, God. I've had your grace and mercy, Lord. God, it was grace and mercy, Lord, that I didn't die before I had an opportunity to get in the altar, God, and repent. Oh, Lamb of God, it was grace and mercy, Lord. God, that I was raised, Lord. God, my mother that believed in prayer, Lord. And God, as a child, taught me how to pray, Lord. Took me to the house of God, Lord. God, oh, there's many tonight, God. There's many little children out there tonight, Lord. God, they ain't got, not got no mama. They got no daddy. They got nobody to take them to the house of God. They got nobody to sit them down and tell them about that man named Jesus. Lord Jesus, many tonight, God. Lord, that's never been exposed, Lord. God, to your love and your compassion. Oh, Lamb of God, they never had access to it, Lord. Oh, God. We got churches almost on every corner, Lord. 
But God, people are still, Lord, God, ignorant to you, Lord, because the Word of God is not being preached, God. Because, God, they're not howling out the pulpits, Lord. They're not teaching people what their transgressions are. They're not teaching them and showing them where they're in error at, Lord. God, I'm asking tonight, God, Lord, to help people, Lord. God, to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying, Lord. God, tonight you're calling us, Lord. Lord, your asses come back to your feet, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, you're asking us to come back. Oh, Lamb of God, we don't praise you enough, Lord. God, for all that you've done for us, Lord. God, I'm asking tonight, help us to see, God. Lord, to read there in Isaiah 53, God, and begin to see the vision that Isaiah had, Lord. You see, when you gave your back to the spiders, you see what they did to you. You see how they mutilated you. God, told it before it happened. God, there's many tonight don't know who you are because the people that's claiming to know you don't know you. They don't know what you are. God, they can't tell nobody about you because you haven't revealed yourself to them. They're blind and don't know who you are. God, if Isaiah hadn't prophesied then Peter and John and Matthew, they wouldn't know what to look for. But because of being like Isaiah, oh, hallelujah. And being like Isaiah said he had no beauty that we should behold him. Oh, they knew what you look like, God, because Isaiah had seen you. Oh, hallelujah. The world don't know what you look like tonight, God, because preachers don't know what you are, don't know who you are. They can't introduce the world to you. Because they hadn't been revealed. God, Jesus, I'm asking you to reveal yourself. God, that we can show this generation who you are. God, that we can reveal you to this world. God, that's out here suffering and dying, Lord. God, they're dying tonight, Lord. God, they're going to hell, Lord. God, we got, Lord, like we see on the news, Lord, they're ranting and raving, God. They're marching in the streets, Lord. God, they're scratching on the doors of the Supreme Court. They're pounding on the doors, Lord, just like they did in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, Lord, when the angels of the Lord came down, Lord. God, even after He smote them with blindness, they still felt along the wall, trying to get a hold to the angels, Lord. God, they don't retain you in their knowledge anymore. Anymore. And God, the church is guilty. Oh, the church can't look and say, look at those heathens. Look at those old sinners out there. God, the cause, Lord. God, we're not out there lifting you up, Lord. God, we act just like everybody else, Lord. God, we go to the Walmart, Lord, but somebody cuts in the line in front of us. We get mad and have an attitude, Lord. God, I'm asking you to help us, Lord, to let you shine out of us, Lord. There's a world out there blind tonight, Lord. God, because they don't see you. God, there ain't no light on. You said you are the light of the world. You said you're the light of the world. Lord, we need to light this world up. Jesus, we need to light you up. Draw back this old wickedness. Draw back this old evil. God, tonight your only remedy I know, Jesus, is that great price that you paid, Lord. God, so many people, God, they want to preach and twist people's minds up. And Lord, they don't even know how to tell them about who you are. They don't even know how to tell them how to come and get saved. God, there's so much. God, showing their own self, Lord. They want to have some big revelation. And the people don't even know how to get saved. I don't even know how to get saved anymore, Lord. God, old-fashioned conviction, God, needs to come back, Lord. God, it needs to come back. But it begins in us, Lord. God, if we get convicted, Lord. God, if we return back, God, we'll be able to help the sinner man. We'll be able to help those that are lost out there. Oh, Lamb of God. Lord, Isaiah said, hell was moved from beneath Lord, the Bible tells us hell enlarged in itself. And God, when we see God, so many people rejecting you, Lord. 
So many people crucifying you afresh. So many people out there, God, that can't stand even hear the name of Jesus. God, our court systems, Lord, can't stand to have the Ten Commandments to guide them in what they do, Lord. God, our school systems, Lord, can't stand to have the name of Jesus lifted up, Lord. They'd rather have mass shootings. They'd rather have all kinds of things. But the Word of God is not welcome. And then they wonder why we're in such a mess. God, we need to return back. Oh, love of God. Lord, our children are not allowed to open a Bible in a classroom. But they'll teach you pornography. They'll teach them. They want to get them out in preschool. And they want to tell them all this kind of corruption. And they want to let homosexuals come in and teach them. But a man of God or a woman of God try to open her book or her Bible on her desk. They want to run them out of there. The very thing that would help them. The very thing that would save their skins. The very thing that would break the drug epidemic. The very thing that would drive back that suicide force. God, the very thing that our kids need is the blood of Jesus being applied to the doorpost of every schoolhouse across America, Lord. Oh, Lamb of God, every schoolhouse needs the blood. Oh, hallelujah. The, the blood of the Lord being applied to it, Lord. God, every child, Lord, is out from under the protection, Lord. God, every child, Lord, that don't know how to call on you, Lord, is out from under the protection, Lord. The devil's out there like a roaring lion, and he's wanting to steal them, God, and take them out. And God... But Lord, we pass laws that say it's against the law to pray. It's against the law to mention the name of Jesus. But God, let us do like Daniel, Lord. God, no matter what it costs us, Lord, let us throw open our windows, God. God, let put that courage and that boldness in us, Lord. God, like the apostles, Lord, they came aside and said, God, you got to grant us boldness. They're threatening to kill us. They're chopping our heads off. They're beating us. They're locking us up in prison. But God, give us boldness. God, give us boldness tonight to stand and withstand. To Stand up in this generation and lift the name of Jesus up. You said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. Oh, Lamb of God, if you're not being drawn, it's because I haven't lifted you up. Oh, anoint me to lift you up. Anoint me to lift you up. And tell the world about who you are. God, hallelujah. Anoint us, Lord, to preach who you are. And God, and teach this generation, oh Jesus, that you're real. You're not some fairy tale. You're not just another historical figure, Lord. But you're the slain. You were the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. And God, that scripture, God, we can win thousands of souls. Just what that scripture said, he that cometh to me, I know I was cast out. Oh, Lamb of God. But Lord, in order to get them to you, we got to know who you are. In order to teach them about you, we got to know who you are. You got to be revealed to us, Lord. God, that we can reveal you to this world, Lord. God, they came and, and Philip came and got Nathaniel and said, We found him. Lord, if, if Isaiah and David and them hadn't said what you was and what to look for, they wouldn't have known you when you came. God, this world tonight don't know who you are. Oh, Lord, let us get ready, Lord. Let us get busy. Jesus, you said, I've got one prayer request. You said, when you pray, pray to the Lord of harvest that He'd send laborers. Because the laborers are few, but the harvest is great. And God, the world is that harvest out there. And God, it's more than any of us can do. God, if we went from now till you came back, God, we couldn't reach them all, Lord. And God, tonight I'm asking you to light a fire on us, Lord. Let us get busy, Lord. Let you shine out at the gas pump, Lord. Let you shine out at the cash register line, Lord. Let you shine out, God, in the hospitals, Lord. Let you shine out at the prisons, Lord. God, let them begin to feel that drawing, Lord. God, be 